Honey, put the hat on. We Ella, need... Ella's wearing Oh, jeez. Ella, look at you, baby. Oh, you so cute, girl. <laughs> Glacier, Kalispell, Montana is the theme for today. And I would like to announce that thank you, Mark Martin, for telling us to book at the Montana Base Camp, which is in Kalispell, Montana. We were able to get in the park. The other thing that's in, that's in. Uh, Wait, we're talking about the park right now. I understand. You gotta go in like order of my notes. Okay, here's the notes. No, give me, so, give me my notes. In a small, town by Kalispell is an old friend of ours. I think his name was Mark Martin. He's a pretty famous NASCAR oh. driver. Okay, I know what you're doing. In his shed, in his bus barn, is the cleanest, prettiest, fastest motor You could lick his bus. He would kill on, you, on but the you planet. could lick it and not get I any. I mean, I think Mark should post more pictures of that coach. He does a lot. Especially the engine side. It's actually, it's... Super badass. So Andy and his wife, I believe her name was Christy. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but they just opened up this park a year ago during COVID. They, they were opened from Orlando. it up. They were from Orlando. Mm -hmm. They've done a fantastic job with it. It's very easy to get into, big rig friendly, very clean, big wide spots. And because we love the park so much, we actually cooked out there a lot. Welcome to Montana Base Camp in beautiful Kalispell, Montana. We're about 30 miles outside of Glacier National. We discovered this park because once we started planning the, the whole Lewis and Clark expedition, we wanted to return to Glacier. I never got to see many Glacier and it's just such a pretty park and it was en route, so why not stop again? The problem is, where you normally stay is Polson, but it's kind of far. It's pretty, but I've already been there. We also wanted to check into that the KOA at West Glacier, but we were just way too late. There was no way we were getting in there. I called Mark Martin because he's been RVing a lot and he has a place in Montana, and I said, isn't there any other place where you could get a big rig? And he referred this park. It's fairly new. Um, Andy and his wife, Christy, run it and I'm telling you we absolutely love it. As you can see it's basically just two rows very nicely laid out wide wide spots full hookups. They have all kinds of little like buildings like this in between there's they're scattered throughout the park and they offer laundry in there and bathrooms, showers, facilities if you need it. We're only, I think, two miles from historic downtown Kalispell, and there's a nice bike trail around here, which Mike and I are gonna get on our buzz bikes and, and check out later this afternoon or later this morning, maybe go into town for a little lunch, check it out. Also in Kalispell, you've got a Costco, lots of grocery stores, so if you need to load up, <laughs> it's a great place to do that. But. This will be our base camp. The thing that we really, really, really enjoyed more than anything else is the fire pit. Wood is included in your package, your per night stay, and it's good wood too. It burned really nice last night. And they have these fire pits right behind every lot. They're nice cement fire pits. They're pretty safe. And we, I think, had a fire going for four hours last night. We didn't go inside till like midnight. We happened to luck out. We got a really, nice parking spot. Okay, so here's where we're parked. Tom and Laura right next to us. We are in spot 55 and they are in spot 54. The reason why I really love this spot, the sun literally goes down right over that mountain. So last night while we're having dinner, we had the most beautiful sunset view. So if you can pull it off, Andy will kill me for suggesting this because everybody will be asking, but if you can luck out, <laughs> and get spot 55 or 56 or any on this side of the park, you're gonna have some beautiful skies to enjoy in the evening. That sky out there turned pink last night for probably two hours. Thank you, Mark Martin, for suggesting Base Camp Montana because we didn't think we were gonna be able to find a location anywhere near Glacier. Uh, the West Glacier KOA was already sold out. So how lucky are we? Look at this, and our lots are ready for the sunset every night. Again, it's just at the edge of town. Yep. So you're convenient in any direction to go 
get fuel or get food. Well, you're close go, to go to a pub, go to a pizza joint. You're whatever. close to Whitefish. Get your car cleaned up. Whatever. The little town of Kalispell was cute, first of all. Yeah. Then you're also close to Whitefish, which was really cool. Whitefish was great. Now, here's the thing. The reason why we went here is because I wanted to go back to Glacier National Park, and we could not get into West um, KOA Glacier, which is where everybody tells you to go if you want to be the closest to the park. I'm gonna let you know our journey and how we pulled off Glacier National in one day. That's My advice is to take two or three days to do <laughs> Well, but, but here's we the problem. It into one day. Because here's the problem. We were staying in Kalispell. Quite a hike. And it's two and a half hours to get up to the top um, towards Many Glacier. And when we went to Glacier before, I didn't get to see Many Glacier. And I really wanted to see it. Here's what we did after lots of research. And I'm gonna add some things of what not to do that we did. Number one is it's going to be a really long day. So we had to take the dogs. We couldn't leave them in the bus all day. Bring food. Bring food. Just pack your cooler Bring your drinks and your and picnic your basket and lunch, Have a picnic. dinner, Don't. wine, beer, yeah. waters. Don't depend on the local establishments to it was be very accommodating correct. because they got a very bad attitude. It was kind of sad. And it and the food sucked. Yeah. So just take your own deal and make it a big picnic fun day. Here's what you do. You leave Kalispell and you go up and around instead of going straight to the um, west entrance of Glacier National you basically go up and around the park where you're kind of going around the backside and around to Medicine towards, um, what was it, Browning? I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't about. know. Look, at, read my blog, Skinner5media.com. She's ready to do these things, I, but she doesn't have any prep work done. I do, I do. But we left in the late morning. Our goal was to be entering Glacier National from the St. Mary entrance at the top and do the run, Sun Road backwards, basically go from the top down to the bottom where we ended up at West Glacier area. We also wanted to enter the Sun Road around five o'clock. That was the main goal because of crowds. It's been really, really crowded in the park. We had our ticketed entrance um, where we bought our little tickets, but we didn't need them. If you go before 6 a.m. or you go after 5 p.m., you don't need that little pass to get access into the park. But we had it just in case, in case we and entered it was early. Five, yeah. So I really, really wanted to see Many Glacier. So we had a beautiful drive up and around where you actually go on the backside of Glacier. You get to see Two Medicine area, and then you pass St. Mary. Well, we decided we would have lunch in St. Mary on the way to Many Glacier. That was a bad idea. We should, we. Literally, I'm not joking, you guys. It was 1.30 or 2 o'clock, and we couldn't, we couldn't find a restaurant. Everywhere we went, they said, we're not going to serve again until 3.30 or 3. We found a little Mexican. Most of them didn't even open until 2. No. We found a little Mexican restaurant that said they were open from 11 to 5, but then they put a handwritten sign that said, sorry, folks, closed until 2. We went at 2. Then they said, no, we're we changed our mind. 3.30 now. We were like, wow, we're starving. Needless to say... We finally got fed, but now we are like way off our schedule, which for me is a stressor. <laughs> so we finally got back on the road. You guys, it wasn't like, it was like 4.30 by the time we finally actually got to eat lunch. And then an hour of construction. Well, then, well, hold on. So then we enter Mini Glacier. Now, when you enter the road to Mini Glacier, you're going to the Mini Glacier Hotel. That's where you can park and you can get out and walk around and do trails. We were going to do like a nice little trail. <laughs> and that was our plan. Well... By the time we got onto the road to Many Glacier, there was uh, road construction on the gravel road. There is about eight miles of gravel road. Be prepared. So no one told us about the construction on the road that takes you to Many Glacier Hotel. Yeah, you get stopped for a long time. You're also on a gravel road for about 11 miles. So just FYI, the gravel road, I don't really mind as much. It's just not knowing about the construction where you get stopped. This is putting us back another hour and a half. Like, we really want to get to the road to the sun eventually. My big plan to do this early is not so smart. And the cows have caught back up with us too. <laughs> and we were trying to make the best of it. We were trying to be positive. We're like, oh, it's so beautiful. Look at the streams, look at the mountains. But after an hour of being stuck in traffic on a gravel road, we were getting a little cranky. We finally got to Mini Glacier. It was gorgeous. It was worth it. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we see. Now we are seeing the peaks. We're in the sound of music. And I believe the sound of music music is in the background. 
<laughs> yes. But, but, that's right. For the sound of music. Come on, Debbie. If I would have known, I think I would have called ahead and tried to have lunch. I should have made a reservation at Mini Glacier Hotel. So, no, if I had it to do over again, well, I'd I would, like to stay I would, there. I would get somebody to watch the dogs. Yeah. And we would stay the night there. Yeah, that's what you should do. And, and go out on the boat. And, yes. Uh, because it is absolutely worth seeing. It's beautiful. Yeah. And so we are going to go back there one day, stay there, and actually do the boat ride to the glaciers where you can do the hikes and do it the yeah. proper way. We got out. We did a quick little... It looks like Switzerland, it's beautiful. The hills are alive with the sound of music. We okay, sang, let's go. and 10 minutes later, we were back in the car because schedule people. So we, we get back into St. Mary. So then we ended up entering the Sun Road at the top at the St. Mary's entrance. Now, I am going to say that is the way to do the Sun Road. It was so different than what we've we done had. it the other way. Yes. But this was really cool. The views it's were it's deep. like we saw more glaciers or something. I and don't, we had less traffic and less people to contend. Definitely with. less traffic. We found parking spots it was kind of a cool everywhere. Way to do it. Logan's Pass, we found parking there. We got back in the car and then we went to Logan's Pass. We didn't really hike much there because schedule people, schedule. There was a spot where I really, Tip, really wanted have no damn schedule. Just go have well, fun. Well we were gonna run out of daylight. <clears throat> And the whole thing is, there was a spot that we went to the last time where we stopped and had a picnic. And it's, I think I named the mile marker in my blog. I think it's called The Big Ben. I think it was mile marker 30. Anyways, it's a big place where you can pull off and it's a really pretty view. And we did make it there right before the sunset. We had some wine and the, uh, my tradition of cherry spitting contest. Yeah. A spit take. Ronnie Custer originated. We originated it. So I made the group all spit cherries. That's where the guy was proposing. That was neat. Yes, we got to see a proposal. We actually did get to enjoy that stop. We stopped. Yeah. We relaxed. We had some snacks, um, cheese and crackers and our cherries and the wine. And that was, that was really nice. We found my stop that I wanted to come back to. Perfect oh, wait a time. That wasn't the proposal. That was to be. Somebody just got proposed down here. Proposed to down there. But we are having a little picnic back here. So the last time that I was here, I had a cherry pit spitting contest with my friend Lonnie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three. Oh, yours went far. <laughs> three, one, two, three. Oh, I oh man, I think I won. I don't think so. I, I just hit that girl on the side of the head. Down. I, I, you won. I hit the bride. <laughs> then we got back in the car to continue our little version down and um, towards the west entrance of Glacier and the sun started setting. That was pretty. Seeing all those little mini uh, glaciers was really, really yeah. cool too. And Lake McDonald was beautiful at sunset. We didn't stop. We wanted to, but we really had to get back because Chris and Debbie's dog was in their bus and we well, needed to get back to the doggy. Yeah. We had our dogs with us. Yeah. We didn't get to stop at Lake McDonald and Skip Rocks, which was on the schedule. <sighs> I, I compromised. Um, but it was a cool day. We made it happen. If we would have not had the screw up of the five hour lunch, everything would have been perfect. So take your own food. Don't rely on the restaurants in the glacier area because they're just not at full staff. And hey, it's you not can working. always try them. And if you get the same Good luck. bullshit that we did, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, all, you have a backup. You have your yeah. own stuff packed. So, so the rest of our Kalispell trip was really just hanging out around Whitefish and Big Fork and um, Kalispell. And it was a lot of fun. We did a Mexican night for everybody. 
when all of our friends arrived, we had a little Mexican fiesta. Kiki shared his little sombrero with all the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> which was fun. We went to the lodge at Whitefish and we ate at the little boat house restaurant, which that was really fun lunch. We had some margaritas in Manhattans and had a nice lunch. Walked around town. Of course, you and Chris found the local dive bar. We've been walking around the little town of Whitefish. Yes. We went to what? The lodge for lunch? Yeah. The boat. Was really good. The boat house lodge, right? The boat house. Yeah, the boathouse restaurant in the lodge in Whitefish, and it was amazing. We had a couple glasses of wine and some, I think, every appetizer on the menu, just to make sure. And so we decided we'd go shopping, so we sent the boys. We said, you guys go drink beers. We want to go check out some of these cute shops in Montana. And then we looked across the street, and we saw this. Place called the Palace. The Palace, the most redneck rugged bar you could find in town and guess what that's where they were that's where they were <laughs> my husband just left his pool stick standing right there you have to have good balance so is that a good stick if it does that no it's a piece of shit oh <laughs> so you guys got to shoot some pool in the cool little saloon downtown yep. whitefish we got to shop so i was happy and really cool old beer joint. You can tell this place has been there since yeah. the 1800s. Quarter tables for pool. So cool. Yes. Well, they're a little more so. than a quarter nowadays. But. So that was fun. It was good to see our friends. It was good to see Chris and Debbie. It was good to see Kelly and Brenda because they were on a Wild yep. West adventure. And um, I was happy because I finally got to see Mini Glacier, kind of. I guess we'll have to go back. Let's do it. Well, our final night in Base Camp, Montana, in Kalispell. And we're having the blessing of another beautiful sunset, literally in the back of our camping spot. Very special farewell. Thank you, Kalispell. We loved Base Camp. <laughs>